So 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I'm writing to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Let's keep going to verse 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So John now breaks into a bit of poetry here. That's why you see the offsets. This was poetical. Um, he was writing not just a letter now, but he was writing a poetry. Now, uh, this could be all kinds of things, right? But it is a form of poetry and poetic verse in the way he's putting at it. Um, you know, he's using these six phrases and three verses to uh, point to a, a message that he wants to get across. The first three were in what we would call the Greek text. Now, I, I will preface this. I hated English. I don't care what a noun or a verb or an adverb or present tense, past tense, all that, right? But when we're talking about things written in the Bible, sometimes those tenses can give us some clue to the meaning. In fact, in the Greek, there are multiple tenses, and the tenses are very, very important. It's like sometimes we'll talk about the, you know, the, the Great Commission, um, to go. Go and make disciples. But that word go wasn't just go. That didn't just mean, okay, if you're a missionary and you go, make disciples. If you're called to the ministry, then go. But no, it was for all of us, and it meant as you are going. It was this present continual tense that was going on, right? And so the tenses have a meaning. So the first three that he mentions here were in a Greek present tense. I am writing right now. I am writing. But then the second three were in what's called Greek eratus, aorist, right? And it was actually like a um, past tense. I wrote was how it was translated. I write is how it was translated here, but it's more I wrote or I have written, right? It's a past tense. Some think the latter three maybe were were he was talking about the gospel he wrote. You know, he was talking about the gospel of John. I wrote that in the past for you. Some say maybe he was taking the back seat. And so now he was putting himself in the audience and going, well, I wrote to us. And this is what we need to learn. So we don't really know, right? But that's the reason behind these couple tenses. John is in that seat of the reader, maybe. And he was talking about this journey that they were on together. So was John writing to three different groups, right? He mentions fathers, kids, and children, you know. The Greek is kind of tricky. It's like verse 12 is this word, um, I am writing to you little children. Technin is the Greek, and it was this idea of a young child or children, right? And then in the end of 13, right, we see young men, which is Dayden or young in experience would be probably a little bit better of a translation there. So it maybe not been young men, but it might have been young believers, right? So young in experience. He appears to be speaking to all young in age and old in age, as well as young in experience and old in experience, right? He was speaking to the whole church as a whole, not just a gender, but to those of age differences and experience differences. The message was clear. Because of Christ, your sins are forgiven. It's the gospel. To the young or old, you're forgiven by Christ. It's the gospel to the believer. Experienced or non-experienced, he can be trusted and true. 
This is the great commission to preach, to preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. It's for all, everyone, everyone. To fathers, both times he says, you have known him. So those in the parental role, those in a leadership role, you have known him. Don't forget, you have known him. To the young and experienced or the young men, right? The young in age and experience, you have overcome evil and you are strong. Right? God is in you. God is on you. Because sometimes we come out of the gate passionate, right? We talked about that you know, the last Sunday. Starting well is not good enough. We were praying about that with pastors, you know, that, that sometimes we, you know, that people can get to the end of their ministry and kind of, well, slow down. So they're running through the gate well. Those that are young in age and experience, you have a passion. You are overcoming evil. Don't lose sight. Don't forget that. It reminds us to be brave. To be brave for the battles against the evil one. It's a battle for the souls of humanity. It's the battle for your soul first. And it's the battle for the souls of all around us that we are a part of. Satan is seeking to overwhelm the walls. To overwhelm the church. To overwhelm the people of God. And we overcome, first and foremost, by Jesus Christ. We overcome the difficulties in the world around us because of Jesus Christ. We overcome then because we remember that what we've done it before in Jesus Christ. You know, when we are facing a challenge in our life, it's hard or it can be very hard to remember where God showed up before. I, you know, I've shared this story from the pulpit a few times that, um, you know, Mandy and I at one point in our marriage, in our family and everything, it was kind of a, a struggle at, and, and there was a lot of attacks going on and work and home and church. And, and we were challenged by somebody to go back and write out, and I don't remember where it was, if it was somebody particular or a book or just a Holy Spirit nudge. But to go back and to begin to look at the times and places God had shown up in our lives. And as we did it, we began to remember events that we had forgotten all about. We began to remember the times that God showed up that we had forgotten. Huh. We overcome because we remember. You know, he's never forsaken me before and he's not going to start forsaking me now. Sometimes, as a new believer, though, you've not gone through that yet. And you have to walk alongside with other believers who's been there and can say, you know what, let me tell you, I've been there. Let me tell you how, you know, how hard it was for me. Let me tell you about the times, though, and how God made himself known to me, right? Those are the things that we, we work through. We overcome because we remember We've done it before in Jesus Christ, not on your own, not in your strength. We've gone through this and gone to the other side because of Jesus Christ. And we reflect. We reflect. We need to be grateful. We need to sing praises. Praise the Lord in the good and praise the Lord in the bad. We need to praise him. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Your glory fills the heavens. We must be grateful. We must have hope and we must persevere, right? That's the challenge of John to all of us. We all have history. We all have history, for good or for bad. We all have times where we've struggled, and we all have times where God has shown up and shown off. And we only overcome 
first through Jesus Christ, but he then gives us the vehicle of the body of Christ to come around each other, to help each other, to overcome the difficulties in our lives. So we need each other and we need each other. <laughs> they need you and you need them. That's the body of Christ. We so often forsake the fellowship. We forsake Sunday mornings. We forsake life groups or Sunday school classes. We forsake groups of accountability. We forsake. And when we do that, we are weakening the power of Jesus Christ in us to overcome. So I don't know about you. I, I don't know everything. I've not experienced everything. I've not come against everything. But why do we, in our walk with Christ, sometimes think we have to reinvent the wheel? We have to do it our own every single time, right? It's a personal faith instead of the corporate as well. That coming alongside and going, you know what? I'm going to humble myself right now and say, I'm having an issue in X area. And then people in that group can go, been there. Can I walk it through with you? You know, can I help you through that? So you just lost a family member. Been there. Let me give you comfort. Let me give you hope. Let me be an anchor. When the winds and the waves are blowing away, you need that anchor of Jesus Christ and the arms of the church. We need each other. We must help. We must help others as we walk along in this life and lead, leave that legacy for him. We do that by not loving the things of this world. By growing and learning. And we're going to be starting a class on Wednesday nights going through theology. It's not just a straight up Bible study. I thought about doing a Bible study, but I'm like, you know what? We're doing that on this and I'm going to do something else on Wednesdays and we're going to go through a theology class. Um, you're going to walk away from that and however long it takes with a Bible, um, not, you know, Bible degree knowledge of theology. You may not remember it all, but you'll have notes, fill in the blanks, all that. You know, we're gonna we're gonna study it together. We're gonna unpack it together. We're gonna wrestle with it together, because there are some key things. One of the first ones is we're gonna be talking about is um, bibliology, you know, and the study of the Bible, the theology of the Bible. And there are those that say, well, we make it bibliolatry, right? When we say that, you know, it's scripture is the key doctrine, the the key. Um, thing that we hold to. The world tries to tell us, well, the Bible is just a bunch of old letters and really there's nothing special in it. And it's the Holy Spirit as revealed to you that helps you to know. And it's your reason and it's all these other things. And so if you really think that the Bible is the only word of God and the truth, well, then you've made an idol out of the Bible. But no, we're, we look at it and go, well, how on earth, you know, we want to love Jesus more. And how, how do we know Jesus unless we see how he's revealed? And he is revealed not just in the Gospels, but he is revealed throughout the entire Bible, including Leviticus, right? He's, in, he's revealed everywhere. But we need each other in order to walk through this, to journey together, to see different ways that we read the same passages. So my challenge is to us today... What area are we running from the church? In what area are we running from the fellowship? In what area are, are we not allowing others to speak into us, to walk alongside us? In what areas are we in our pride and ego not asking for help? In what areas, you name in the blank, right? You fill in that blank. And I pray that we would be willing to speak, to ask for prayer, for ask for help, because we need each other. We need each other to pray. We need each other to lift us up, to help us to persevere. 
All right, so here, here's another dumb illustration. You see behind my shoulder here, if you've never really seen these, these this is a clock that uh, as I'm looking at it, looks like it needs new batteries, right? And, and then this is a record that somebody painted on, somebody that we know painted, and both of them are scenes from the Lord of the Rings. Yep, J.R.R. Tolkien, go figure. This pastor is gonna talk about Tolkien. But the whole journey is, you know, that the evil has made this ring and their essence is in this ring and the ring needs to be destroyed. It can only be destroyed in one place. And so they bring together this group of people. Why? Because in the fellowship, they're stronger. One of them decides I'm going to go off it on my own. And they would have never survived if they had not had a friend come alongside them. They all had different parts in the journey. They all had different passions, but yet they were still one in their goal to defeat the evil. That's the church. We come together on Sundays to regroup so that we go out in our passion areas. Those that teach, those that evangelize, those that pray, those, those that serve in various ministries around our community. We break off into our passion groups to come back together and learn from each other. We're stronger together. We need each other. Strengthening us. Building us up. Encourage one another. So God, I pray that we would be people that are drawn to the fellowship. That when we miss a day, we feel weak. Draw us to you and draw us to each other. Grow us in love for you and love for others. Challenge us in this, we pray, Lord. We can learn from those within our own church. We can learn from those who've gone before through the biographies of saints of old. We can be encouraged and strengthened as iron sharpens iron. We don't journey this alone. Jesus went off and prayed by himself. But the percentage of times where he's alone is extremely small in comparison to those times he's with his group, the life group, Sunday school class, whatever you want to call those disciples, and in the greater church, inside the temple, in the mountains, in places teaching into crowds. May we learn from his example. We need each other. More and more, as Satan rears his ugly head, we need each other more. So give us strength. Give us perseverance. And encourage us yet, even today. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Well, go in peace. And I pray you have a great...